Hospital in Port Leash. I'm talking to you today about the maternity services we provide here in the hospital. We work with a range of healthcare professionals, including dietitians, physiotherapists, medical social workers, to name a few of the services available should you require them. We are currently developing our midfree lead clinic, which is available to women who have a low risk pregnancy. If you have any questions, you can talk to your midwife during your antenatal visit. The mychild.ie and whatsappmum.ie websites are excellent resources available for pregnancy, labour and baby care information. We recommend as a hospital that all women are vaccinated against COVID-19 to protect both yourself and your baby against COVID-19 infection. COVID-19 or coronavirus is here. So it's important to have the correct information at hand, like knowing the symptoms, a high temperature, a cough, shortness of breath or breathing difficulties. If you have symptoms, self-isolate to protect others and phone your GP. Visit hse.ie for updated factual information and advice or give us a call. Protection from coronavirus. It's in our hands. Midland Regional Hospital Port Leash, we want to ensure that you have the best possible experience of pregnancy and post-birth. My name is Dr Kat Hines and I run the Perinatal Mental Health Service here. Pregnancy is a time of great change, physical, emotional and psychological. It's important to be mindful of your emotional health and well-being during this time. It is normal to feel a wide range of emotions, including excitement, joy, worry, stress and responsibility. You are also pregnant during a very unusual time, a global pandemic, which contributes to new and unexpected challenges. You may need additional support in relation to your mental health, 
if your symptoms persist for more than two weeks, if your symptoms interfere with your ability to work or carry out your usual day-to-day -day activities, if your symptoms cause considerable upset and distress, or if you have suffered from mental health difficulties in the past. Mental health difficulties in pregnancy and after the birth of your baby are relatively common. Up to one in five women will experience a mental health problem in pregnancy or in the first year after birth. If you have suffered from a mental health problem in the past, you may be more vulnerable to relapse at this time. There is nothing to feel ashamed of. With the right help and support, you will get back on track and begin to grow in confidence as a mum and enjoy being with your baby. Referrals to our service can be made by your GP, midwife, obstetrician or public health nurse. My name is Dr. Maroon Doyle, I am the obstetric clinical lead at the Midland Regional Hospital at Port Leash. Together with my four colleagues, Mr. Hossam El Kanini, Dr. Neve Marr, Dr. Annabella Saranito, and Dr. Shoba Singh, we provide the consultant obstetric service at MRHP. You will be allocated to the care of one of the consultants. Each consultant provides a weekly antenatal clinic. Four are general clinics, and one is a specialised clinic. This clinic is the combined obstetric endocrine clinic, otherwise known as the GDM clinic. Women with a history of pregnancy diabetes usually attend the clinic from the first visit. The care of women who develop diabetes during their pregnancy will be transferred to the GDM clinic. Our endocrinology colleagues, together with assistance of the clinical midwife specialist and dietitian, manage the diabetic aspect of the clinic. A new midwifery led clinic is being developed to provide care for low risk women. This is a welcome addition to the current care options available. All women will have a formal scan at their booking visit. All women are offered an anomaly scan at approximately 20 weeks gestation. The obstetric consultants provide cover on a one in five basis for women admitted to the hospital. This means there is always a consultant on duty. However, the consultant on duty when you are admitted may be a different doctor from the consultant at your clinic. We work closely with other medical consultants, particularly the anaesthetic service, who provide the epidural service for pain relief in labour and anaesthesia for women who require a caesarean section or other procedure in theatre. We also work closely with other medical colleagues in radiology, medicine and surgery. Our paediatric and neonatal colleagues provide care as required for your newborn babies. While most babies will not require immediate review after birth, every baby will have a paediatric review prior to discharge from hospital. Resources such as mychild.ie and whatsupmum.ie are helpful in addition to the advice available from the team when you attend the clinic. We encourage all pregnant women to avail of the COVID vaccination, flu vaccination and pertussis vaccination. Hello, my name is Emma Mullins and I'm Clinical Midwife Manager in the Maternity Department here in the Midlands Regional Hospital, Port Leach, and I would like to welcome you here to our unit. The midwifery unit is situated on the second floor and along with our delivery rooms we have a lactation room and the willow suite which is a bereavement suite designed specifically for women and their partners who have had a pregnancy loss. Midwifery care in the maternity department aims to deliver safe high quality woman-centred care giving birth is one of the most significant rewarding and positive life experiences. Childbirth is viewed as a normal physiological process Midwifery care is provided in partnership with the woman and her partner and in collaboration with other healthcare professionals. On the corridor before the delivery suite we recommend the hopscotch station. This is a useful tool to help and support you on your birthing journey. The delivery suite offers a home from home environment whereby women can avail of various birthing options such as the multi-track chair and sling, the birthing stool, the birthing ball and the peanut ball. Hi, my name is Susan and I am one of the midwives here at the Midland Regional Hospital Port Leash. Today I want to talk to you about midwifery-led care and our midwifery-led antenatal clinic here in the hospital. Midwifery-led care is when a midwife is your lead healthcare professional who will look after you and your baby throughout pregnancy, labour and birth. Once you are referred to the hospital by your GP, you will meet a consultant obstetrician who will discuss the option of midwifery-led care with you and see if you fit the criteria. The criteria is 
you must be between 18 and 39 years of age at booking. You must have an uncomplicated pregnancy to date. You have no significant medical or surgical history. And your BMI is less than 30 at booking. If you meet this criteria and choose this option, the consultant will refer you to our service. The benefits offered by midwifery-led care are that you will be seen by the same midwife throughout your pregnancy, which research has shown improves pregnancy outcomes, breastfeeding rates and overall satisfaction in the service. We have a designated labour room for women attending our midwifery-led service, which offers a more relaxed and homely environment for labour and birth. You will still receive combined care with your GP and routine antenatal scans. If you would like to know more about this service or have any questions, please talk to one of the midwives. Hello, my name is Sinead Thompson and I'm a community midwife at the National Maternity Hospital. I designed and created Labour Hopscotch in 2015 in response to an increase in the epidural rates and also in medical interventions during labour and birth. The principle of labour hopscotch is to encourage optimal fetal positioning. This means having your baby's head in the optimum position lined up so it can descend into the pelvis in the optimum position for labour. When this happens, it triggers the spontaneous onset of labour. When women go into spontaneous labour, it's less likely that they'll need induction and that means that there'll hopefully be less intervention in their births. The labour hopscotch framework aims to support and promote natural and active labour, it is encouraged for all women, regardless of the care pathway that they choose for their birth, but encourages more natural methods of pain relief where possible, for as long as possible in labour. Using the idea of the game hopscotch we all played years ago, each of the steps can be undertaken in, to remain active during labour. The process can start at home, beginning at the bottom of the hopscotch board, when you're more active and mobile. The bottom square of the labour hopscotch is called the mobilised square and it aims at promoting optimal fetal position. There are four activities associated with this step and it's important that these four positions are practised throughout the antenatal period in preparation for your labour. Your midwife will explain the positions to you during your pregnancy. Our research findings, which we published in 2019 in our research study, showed that Women who practiced labour hopscotch had reduced epidural rates, reduced the caesarean section rates, increased spontaneous onset of labour and vaginal deliveries. And most of all, there was an increase in birth satisfaction rates. Having a positive birthing experience makes a smoother transition to parenthood. Hello, I'm Claire Fitzpatrick, a clinical midwife specialist in lactation at Midland Regional Hospital, Port Leash. Breastfeeding is incredibly important to you and your baby's health. It protects you from bleeding, cancers, heart disease and diabetes, and it reduces your risk of postnatal depression. Breast milk is the perfect food for your baby, tailor-made to meet their growing needs. The evidence shows that breast milk will boost your baby's immunity, providing the perfect balance of nutrients. It really is liquid gold, totally unique to your own baby, adapting and changing all the time to meet your baby's needs. The most important preparation you need to do for breastfeeding is to attend an antenatal breastfeeding workshop if you can, so that you can know what is normal and what to expect. If you know what's normal, you can get help when it's not. So do book in with your midwife for one of my antenatal breastfeeding workshops.
My name is Yvonne and I'm Clinical Midwife Specialist in Ultrasound. Myself and my colleague Aideen performed the majority of the booking and anatomy scans in Port Leash Hospital. The booking scan is done at your first appointment in the hospital. This helps us to determine when your baby is due. This is often the first scan people have and they get to see their baby's heartbeat for the first time. The anatomy scan is done between 20 and 22 weeks. This is a top to toe check in your baby. We look in detail at the structures in your baby such as the brain and heart and also check to make sure your baby is growing normally. Sometimes we might see something on scan which might need a second opinion. If this happens we talk to your consultant and sometimes organise a referral to the Coombe Hospital for a second opinion with a fetal medicine consultant. The fetal medicine consultant is an expert in ultrasound and will advise you if your baby needs any further screening or tests. If you want to know the baby's gender, you can find out a disappointment so long as the baby is cooperating. If your baby is in a good position, we will take pictures for you and your partner to bring home and share with your family.
Changing your newborn's nappy is one of those things you'll be doing seven or eight times a day, so it's best to be organised from the start. Make sure you have everything you need ready and close to hand. Place your baby on a clean, soft, flat surface. Open the nappy and wipe away excess stools from the genital area with the corner of the nappy. Hold your baby by the ankles and lift up their bottom. Use soft cotton balls or a wet cloth to clean your baby. Clean around the umbilical cord area. For a girl, be sure to wipe from front to back. This will help minimise the spread of an infection. Swap a clean nappy for the dirty one. Use the tabs to see which way goes up. Avoid covering the umbilical cord as this can cause irritation. For a boy, keep his penis pointed down. Fasten the nappy at both sides with the tapes, making sure it's snug, but not so tight that it pinches the skin. Retape the soiled nappy around the contents, put it in a plastic bag and discard it in the bin. Dress your baby and wash your hands thoroughly. Babies wet their nappies several times a day. The number of wet nappies is a helpful sign of how much fluid the baby is taking in. Generally, a baby should have five to six wet nappies each day. This is a good indication that they're getting enough milk. You put your cold water in first, you add your hot, you just check it with your elbow. If it's comfortable for your elbow, it's fine for the baby. It's about 36 degrees centigrade, the water temperature. You put your hand underneath the baby's head like that. You just took the baby under your elbow resting on your hip. Now, I'm holding the baby in the same position and I'm going to wash the baby's hair. So just wash it nice and gently. This is a very good baby. And I'm gonna come back onto my mat and I'm going to lie the baby back down and I'm going to dry the baby's head well. Babies lose a lot of heat from their heads, so make sure that you dry the baby's head very well. Now, when you're lifting the baby into the bath, just turn the baby over on its side, over in this position. Just put one arm, your left arm, underneath the head and hold on to the left arm. And put your right arm underneath the bottom and hold on to the left leg. Now you see there is no way this baby's going to fall on me. I've got the head well supported with my arm here on the left and I've got a good grip of the baby. Now nice and gently you're going to let the baby into the bath. If the baby's enjoying it, of course, just leave them in for a little while. Babies are very used to water from being inside, so they love the sound of the water. I'm going to lift the baby out again. Now you see I'm lifting the baby out nice and gently. So you settle them down, give them a little cuddle. Settle them down and then you're going to dry the baby off well. Don't forget areas where they can get sore if you leave them wet. All babies are quite fat in here, so get right in there under the chin because if you leave areas wet, they're going to get red and sore. They're all get right onto the armpit here where they're all they're like that. And another area is get right onto the behind the knees and in the groin area. They're areas that can actually get sore if you leave them wet. So you make sure that you dry those areas off very well.